Hey, my name is Matt Storer, and I repair saxophones for a living. This year, I've been paying a lot of attention to saxophone pads. I've been doing a lot of thinking about saxophone pads, and I've been doing a lot of experimentation um, with the aim that I want to learn what makes good pads good, what makes bad pads bad, uh, what happens to pads as they're played over time, and how I can use this information to make my pad work last longer, uh, feel better under the fingers, and just uh, be overall better. So I've had an interesting opportunity uh, come up where I had a saxophone that I overhauled about five years ago um, that is owned by a very clean and conscientious player who has put about, let's say, 3,000 hours onto the horn since I overhauled it and had barely any work done to it since. Uh, send it back in to me. And um, I'm going to be replacing all of the pads uh, because... I have found, personally, that when you start talking about pads that have buildup of grime on them, uh, it's possible to reseat them because these are actually still fairly supple, uh, but it's just never going to be as good as replacing the pads, and it takes almost the same amount of time. So considering that he lives uh, in New York City, where we originally met when I worked there, and now I live in North Carolina, so he had to mail his horn down here. In the interest of not having him have to mail his horn again in a year or two, we're putting all new pads in it, so we shouldn't need to uh, have to worry about doing any work on it for quite a long time. So what we've got here is pads that are the same brand that I installed that have been cared for very well, but just played an awful lot. So we've got very few variables, um, and we can compare what's happened to the leather and the felt and the pad itself relative to a new pad. So these are the same brand, brand that I use. Uh, these right here, this is new pads, pad cut in half. This is the working area of the skin. This is the back of the pad skin. And this is the felt of the pad face. And we've got a similar setup here for the pads that came out of the horn that came in. So this is a used pad, used felt on the working side, back side of a used uh, skin, front side of a used skin, front side of a used skin, back of a used skin, pad of a, or felt of a used pad, uh, half of a used pad. This is a used pad. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's washed out because of the light, but I'll show you in a sec. Um, used pad, full felt, and then a new pad again. And I'll actually take this one and move it away so we don't have any confusion. These are the new pads on this side. This is all used pads. So what I found uh, is that the, so the, the new skin here is nice and supple. Um, it's got a bit of stretch to it. Uh, it's very clean feeling. Feels like suede on the back. Feels nice and smooth and soft, uh, like fine leather on the front. Compared to a used pad, and again, these have been very well cared for. This has been swabbed out. Uh, the player is very clean and conscientious, uh, and they have very friendly personal chemistry. Their horn is bare brass, and it's barely uh, worn at all. It looks really, really nice. So this is a best case scenario. Uh, it's got kind of a film on it, and you can sort of see when I turn it in the light there. And that's basically just like the solid parts of the spit and condensation that goes down the horn, even after it's swabbed out, it just dries up and kind of builds up over time. And it's made the pad a little bit sticky. And um, it's something you can probably see better on this pad. In certain areas, uh, like dirt and grit has gotten kind of lodged into the impression for the tone hole, which is the outermost ring here. Uh, and that can be a challenge. Let's say if I were to try and reseat this pad and I were to clean off the tone hole, uh, but the pad seat has worn into impressions where that like dirt and junk used to be and it's no longer there, you're going to have pinhole leaks, um, which wouldn't be a problem if the felt on the used pads was also quite a bit harder. So you can see here is a used pad. You can see the impression of the resonator in the center. Um, actually, that's actually the resonator washer right there in the middle. These are reusable Selmer resonators. And then the next impression, if you can see that, if you're in HD, is the outside of the resonator. Then the outermost impression is the tone hole impression. And the felt has yellowed a little bit relative to an unused felt. Um, it's a little harder under the fingers, 
especially kind of the surface feels almost like a little bit sticky which is because um, as you'll see here here is a new felt or a new pad skin the back of a new pad skin and the back of a used pad skin and you can see the coloration difference there uh, and that's because the moisture and so forth has soaked through the leather the leather is you know porous to some degree um, even the best leathers are a little bit porous and uh, the stuff has kind of soaked in and soaked through and actually gotten through to the felt now of course some people will paint the pads or apply a silicone treatment and um, if done correctly that should keep moisture and so forth from seeping through the pad but there is a downside to painting and treating pads is that it can feel different um, under the fingers it can sound different as it impacts the tone hole um, and not everybody likes it and also uh, if it's not done right which can be a lot of the time um, then the, it actually doesn't seal as well as a regular pad should and given that these lasted about 3,000 hours, which is about the, you know, as far as playing is concerned, I would say the useful lifetime of most adjustment materials and about as far as you should ever play your horn without having it disassembled uh, and completely cleaned. Um, I'm not sure, in my opinion, that painting or treating pads has a whole lot of utility when you kind of think about the big picture. Um, but it is close enough, I think, and it has its its own set of pros and cons that it's up. That's really up to the per, the uh, player. Um, so yeah, that's that's what pads look like that have been played on for quite a while, um, and it's uh, to me pretty interesting to see what actually has physically happened to the pads uh, in the time that it's been played. There's one of the used felts. You can see the impressions, and it's still pretty flexible but kind of firm and like a little bit just I don't know it feels like it got and it feels like clothes that got wet and then air dried versus like you know have been cleaned and then dried in a dryer and this is a lot fuzzier uh, this is the new felt a lot fuzzier it just feels clean um, still pretty firm but a little bit more flexible a little it doesn't really feel kind of crusty like the other ones do and here's the face portion. Oh, I'm just focusing on my hand too much. There's a new pad skin. Here's a used pad skin. Here's the back of an unused pad skin. Here's the back of a used pad skin. Here's a pad skin that's been used that has kind of some buildup and grime on it. Obviously the tone hole looked similar until I cleaned it. And here is a uh, cross-section comparison of a used pad and unused pad. And remember the used pad has adhesive on the back, so that's what you're seeing in the bottom there. So there you go. That is what best case scenario, uh, several thousand hours of playing will do to pads that were high quality, um, well installed, if I do say so myself, uh, at the start and uh, cared for very well by a clean and conscientious player. My name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. I hope you found this helpful, useful, informative, interesting. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or concerns. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much.